you want a simple hack that will help you add on more martial arts students in your doors in one month than you just did for the entire last year? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it and more specifically, how to do it right now. For everybody that's just joining me, if this is your first time, my name is Jennifer Waters and I actually started my martial arts journey as a second generation martial artist. Growing up, the school just wasn't doing the best that it could be. In fact, we were only making a few thousand dollars a month. By the time I graduated high school, we were actually looking at shutting it down, but instead we took a different turn, different strategy, and we started investing into mentorship and systems, implementing them in the school. And within four and a half to five years, I had helped my family's martial arts school go from making just a few thousand dollars a month to over a million dollars a year. Fast forward 14 years into the future, and now through my company, Seven Figure Dojo, I help many school owners around the world do the exact same thing. And in this video, I wanna walk you through the frameworks that we've implemented in our own school and that we've implemented in school owners' lives around the world and how you can add more students in this coming month than you have for the entire last year. So let's dig into it. All right, so for context, I wanna start off and just give you an idea. The last month, so the time of this recording is early June of 2024 and May of 2024, in my own flagship school, we enrolled over 75 students. Now, I know that might seem absolutely incredible and crazy, and believe me, if I had been talking to me, you know, 18 years in the past, I would have said the same exact thing. Like, wow, what in the world did you guys do to be able to make that happen? And I really feel like it boils down to just a few simple things that so many martial arts school owners aren't implementing. And it's frustrating to me that they're not implementing them, which is why I'm making this video right now is to, I really want to help. I want to help martial arts school owners to be able to advance their schools, to be able to grow their schools more, because I know if you do that, you're going to have a phenomenal amount of impact in your community's lives, but not only that, your life is gonna be changed as well. So the very first thing that I wanna start with is what is the offer that you are using to capture people and get them to come into your door. Now there's been so many different offers in the martial arts industry. You have free class offers, you have free week offers, you have two free weeks, one month. Heck, I've seen different types of offers for months of training for free. I've seen things that would be considered bait and switch where it's free, but you just make a deposit. And so therefore it's not free, but it kind of is free. I've also seen things like trials, one week trials, two week trials, four weeks, six weeks, you name the price point, cheap trials, like $7, all the way up to several hundred dollars, but it's a trial. There's so many different offers that are out there, and I think there's a lot of misconceptions in the industry for which one works better. And I wanna break that down today in this video because you need to know why you're offering something beyond just a martial arts guru said to offer that. So let's break down a paid trial offer. Now, the reason why people really favor a paid trial offer is that the trial in and of itself helps do part of the sale. So we're trying to gauge someone's interest when we offer a trial. We're giving them a trial, giving them an opportunity to dip their toes in it, hoping that over the course of the trial, that person will make a commitment based off of what they see or what they experience as part of the trial. And I do believe that trials do work for some people. I do believe that certain people can do trials and it converts students. However, I believe that the reason why people lean more towards trials is because of their lack of ability in another area, which I wanna break down in just a moment. And if you truly are a martial artist, then I'm sure you feel like me. There was a point where you started martial arts and you started your journey and you knew nothing. Now. As you got better, you started to know a lot. And there's a, a lot that, for some martial arts instructors or people who've been in martial arts for a while, there's a lot of people that once they get to a certain level of learning, they don't wanna shift gears and learn something brand new. Now, I would say that I kind of thought that I was a little bit more diverse as a martial artist in general until I transitioned from kickboxing into MMA. Now, granted, I'd been doing jujitsu since I was a kid as well. So I had grown up on the mats grappling. I had grown up on my on the mats striking. But the thing that I wanted to do was MMA. And so as you guys might realize and understand, there is a middle and that's called wrestling. Now for me, I had to come to this realization. And unfortunately, I had to come to that realization after I lost a match in which I didn't have good wrestling defense. Great striking abilities, great ground abilities, but no wrestling defense because I didn't do wrestling. I thought I 
didn't need it because I was great on the ground and I was great standing up, but it just wasn't great in the middle. And because of that failure, I learned that I needed to assess and I needed to learn something that was completely new, somewhat foreign to me, absolutely not somewhat, actually very foreign to me. And I had to go back to the beginning. I had to become a beginner and realize that even though I was great in those other areas, I wasn't great at wrestling. So I poured myself into it and after I eventually got my my head in the right space and understand that it's okay to be a beginner again and it's okay to learn and learn at that pace and so that you can master it, that was when I flipped the switch and then I was able to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Now, what does this have to do with trials? (laughs) Because I feel like so many people, and if I'm stepping on your toes, I apologize, but not really, as I tell my clients. I feel like so many people are lazy when it comes to sales. And so that's why you offer trials. Because if someone says, yes, I'm interested, instead of nurturing that lead to actually get them in the door, and instead of being able to have a conversation with a lead who didn't know you before, and be able to express the value of your program in such a way that you have so much much high value, that that person is going, wow, I can't walk away from this. I have to get started. But because you haven't possessed and you haven't stretched to engage that skill, you're leaning on trials to do the work for you. But the reality is, is that many of you aren't enrolling enough students because you're leaning on something like a trial, whether it's a two week trial, four week trial, whatever kind of trial it is, you are letting that person try to sell themselves on what you have to offer instead of you having a conversation and being able to demonstrate high value, which then in turn allows allows this person to go, yes, I want it. And then in turn, a sale actually happens. So what do I favor and what got all those 75 students in that I was just telling you about that we did in one month, a free introductory offer, a free introductory lesson. That's, that's the offer. And we've done extensive testing with the ads that we run in seven figure dojo. So our clients, when they come in, they get two aspects, marketing and business systems. Now today I'm kind of talking to you about business systems, but rest assured the marketing side of things means that we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of data points that we're able to look at between offers to tell which offer is the best one, which one gets the most amount of leads, the highest volume of leads at the lowest cost possible. It is a free introductory lesson, not a free week, not two free weeks, not a six week trial, a free introductory lesson. And for a while I was trying to scratch my head and think, why is that? Why why is that the case that a free introductory lesson offer would be the catalyst. And that's when I realized in today's society, I would say post 2020, we are in the highest level of distrust person to person. People genuinely don't trust other people. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm not going to dig into that in this video, but you've probably felt the exact same thing before as well. And here's what I figured out. People don't want to commit. They don't want to say yes to something because what if what they believe in isn't true? Now I've committed fully to it, but I might regret it. So the lowest barrier to entry is just a free introductory lesson, a free lesson, something where they can dip their toes in and say, yes, but maybe yes, but I reserve my right not to continue. Yes, I can check it out. And that is the mentality that people are in. Now, the old school martial artists out there, I used to be one a long time ago would say, well, you need to be coming in committed to martial arts. Like you, you should know this. You're coming. What do you expect when you come inside an academy or a dojo? But the challenge here is that that is not what this generation is all about. And you can either catch up to the times or you can be left in the past. And I'm asking and I'm encouraging all of you martial arts school owners to move forward, accept the fact that people are going to be non-committal and embrace it. But also the other thing that you have to realize is that because people are non-committal, if you have no social media presence at all, except for a paid ad, if you have no physical presence, like a social presence, a real presence in your community, except for what is online, they will trust you less than they trust someone else. If there's other alternatives that they can turn to in your area, other schools that have a better social media presence or are in the actual community, there is a, there's a wider presence in the community. They will turn to that person first before turning to you. Why is that? Because of what I said earlier, people don't trust. The only way that you can get someone to trust and actually show up to an introductory lesson is if you can bridge that gap between where they raised their hand and said, I'm interested to I'm walking in the door and they have to know that you are trustworthy. So, If you're not posting online 
like pictures of your classes, videos of your classes, testimonials from your actual students. If you're not doing all those things, if your Google My Business is not up to date where somebody clicks on it and they go, I wonder if this place is open, the pictures look like they're from 10 years ago. If you're not actively engaging on all those different platforms and also engaging actually in the actual community, for example, you can be recognized by other people in the community. If you're not doing those things, it means that you have a lower chance a lower opportunity to actually bring people into your school. So you've got to be doing these things on a regular basis. Now, when you're doing testimonials, if you're doing testimonials, which I highly suggest that you're doing testimonials, your classes can't just be good. They have to be great. You have to have a great product. You have to have something that people want to share with other people. And if you're wondering, well, what should I have them say? A great place to start is just to simply say, why did you show up to our school? What drew you here? Let that person talk. Let them say whatever it is that that brought them to you. And then you need to ask them, what changed? What are the things that once you started training with us, you noticed X, Y, and Z changed? Because that is what people want to see. They want to see and they want to hear that when this particular person came to your school, they were looking for something. The thing that they were looking for was met and exceeded. That's what they want to hear on those testimonials. Now, I truly believe that video testimonials are the best way to go. Now, definitely you want to have some screenshots of some Google reviews. You should definitely do those things and get those types of testimonials. But when you can get somebody physically speaking, physically encouraging someone else that might be considering what you have to offer is huge. And you want to get a wide array, a wide array of different people people, varying people that you can have come in and talk about their story. You might have somebody who talks about their shy child becoming a confident child. You might have somebody come in and say they lost a bunch of weight with you. You might have somebody come in and say, my life was saved because I I knew self-defense when I got mugged. I, I was able to save my life. Whatever it is, that's the type of testimonials that you want. And you want a wide range, different people, people of varying backgrounds in order for the common person who might be researching you to go, those people that were in that testimonial look, sound, and are just like me. So if you do these things, you've got your social media presence, you've got a physical presence in the community, like you're going to events in the community, you're engaging with the local school system, if you're into schools or the local community, your chamber of commerce, whatever it is that's around you, you're, you're, you're known in the community, people are talking about you in the community. If you're doing those things, then the next step is once you do get that lead, you You've got to nurture that lead. That lead is only raising their hands. They haven't seen all your testimonials. They haven't seen your physical presence in the community. They just raise their hand. Now, if you're known in the community, when they raise their hand, they're more likely to recognize your name or what you stand for. And they've had good experiences with your name or with your brand. If they don't know much about you or you're just starting off, Your lead nurture has to be on point. And I've heard this a couple of times. I want to dispel this myth. There is a myth that exists that said we should be concerned about lead quality. And I just want to tell you, I don't believe in lead quality. (gasps) Oh no, I can hear it now in the comments. Don't believe in lead quality. No, I absolutely do not believe in lead quality. And here's why. If you are a business and you are doing a million dollars or less per year, you don't have a right to distinguish between what is a quality lead and what is a bad quality lead because you don't have enough leads. If you are getting 5,000 leads a month, there is a need to start distinguishing between levels of interest and that would correlate to lead quality. But if you're not getting 5,000 leads a month, you don't have a lead quality issue. Your pool of leads is so little that you just have going to actually say yes to your classes, yes to your program, yes to your pricing. So just get it out of your head. I promise you, the moment that you stop trying to judge people on the quality of whether or not they are a quality lead or not, the moment you stop trying to do that, you will be free to actually enroll more people. You'll be less judgmental on the area that they're coming from on the stupid questions that they ask. Like so many, I I hear this so many times. So many people say, I'm just so tired of people asking me the first time that they call. 
or the first time I get in touch with them, how much are your classes? They don't even want to know anything about what we have to do or what we have to offer here. That's because your leads that you have, they're not, ed they're not educated. It's not like they've done this for a living. They have no idea what they're supposed to be asking or how they're supposed to be asking it. So instead, you've got to take that leadership role and you've got to sit there and you've got to go, okay, I'm going to nurture this lead and I'm going to educate them as I nurture them so that by the time they come in, they are set, they are ready, and I'm going to enroll them. And so if you are nurturing your leads, what I mean is you've got to call and text those leads minimum two times a day for at least a week, minimum do those things. If you're giving up after trying to reach out to them with a phone call, a text message, an email, and that's it, piece of communication, if that's all you're doing, let me tell you, you're going to be waiting forever to convert leads from online advertising or from people that don't know you beyond referrals. It's going to be an absolute horrible experience for you if you're not doing that. You have to follow up on those leads. You have to. And then you also need opportunities for the public to come check you out, to come see what's inside of your school. So if you don't have those opportunities lined up on a regular basis, I would invite you to start doing this at least once a month. Have something where the public can come out. They can see what you're all about. You can have an open day or an open house day. You can have a bring a friend event. You can have a cookout. I don't care what you have, but you need to advertise it. You need to get your current students to bring all their friends and then you need to open it to the public so everybody can come see what you're about. If you're doing these things, you are going to create an avalanche of momentum, which is what we did in our own flagship school, which ultimately allowed us to have some of our best months ever of growth in our own school over the last few months because of these pivotal strategies. So the simple hack to enroll more students in one month than you have in the last year is you simply have to market more. Get out there, market more, tell more people about what you do. Stop trying to judge lead quality. Stop trying to figure out how to get around sales where the program will sell itself if you hand somebody a pamphlet or show them a video. Suck it up and learn the skills that are going to take you to the next level. Whether you just want 100 students, 200 students, whether you want a half a million dollar school, whether you want a million dollar school, whether you want multiple schools generating millions of dollars, have to market more.